This is Wayne Smith. I'm back again. This is our third lecture. And this one is kind of the, the beginning lectures of this series, and this one is on the equipment that's on a carrier. So we're going to start off with some of the basic stuff. I'm going to give you a quick visual overview of it. Then we're going to go back through it one piece at a time. I'm going to tell you what it is show it to you so you can become familiarize yourself with what the equipment is as we go through this lecture series everything that I show you we're gonna put into action so if you don't get it all today you're gonna see it again but hopefully it'll help you have a familiarity with what we're doing about it so if you want to take a quick look around at what we've got <clears throat> And again, he's just going down the bed. I've kind of arranged this bed in a way that starts out at tow and kind of gets progressively more complex as we get to the back of the bed as the equipment goes. So there's just all kinds of stuff that you carry on it. This is not all the stuff you can carry on it. This is the stuff that over the years of service, of trying to provide uh, service to members and customers over the years, this is kind of the stuff that I think is kind of the bare bones essential of what you need to have. Um, there's always better equipment. There's always stuff that you can add. Um, I'm going to go over the stuff that I think is kind of the minimalistic stuff that you need to know about if you're going to be towing and kind of what the basic uses of it are to be. So the first thing we're going to talk about is these guys. Always protect your hands. It keeps the cars clean, it keeps your hands nice, and you always want to have a good pair of gloves. I like leather ones. I'm kind of old school. They got some real fancy ones today. Whatever suits your thing, but wear gloves and take them off when you're getting in and out of the truck or whenever you're getting in and out of a customer's vehicle. So the first thing I want to point out is the tie-down system that's on the truck. It's an over-the-wheel tie-down system. The straps are always in place uh, and stay on the truck typically that way all the time. Now one thing that I would tell you is on these straps, if you're in a cold climate, you want to take these off and put them in your cab at night because nothing's worse than a pair of frozen straps in the wintertime that you got to get unthawed. I have guys that will actually take them home and put them in a, drill some holes in a bucket and put them over top of an air vent in their house just to keep them nice and warm because, boy, a frozen strap in the wintertime is just not your friend, especially if you know it's going to rain the night before. Uh, it's good to have them, but for the most part, we're going to leave them out. Um, so these, there's not a lot to show on them. This one here is getting pretty wore out. But again, these straps come out, and you'll see this more later. This is kind of what we call the dog bone strap in the middle, and it goes over top of the tire, and then we, we tighten it down as it goes. So and you do all four tied add-ons. If you don't get anything else out of this today, everything that I'll teach you will be a four-point tie-down system. I see things all the time that don't follow that, and I did that for years. So to say that I'm a hypocrite and everything's got to be four-point tie-down, I can tell you that DOT says you should do that. Um, I can tell you that I see a lot of guys that don't, and I was one of those guys for many years until I learned a better way. And you want to get everything a full point tie down, so that's what we're going to train you on. Um, we always keep a spare one of these straps in the in the boxes in case one of them breaks while you're out in the day. That's just something we get in the habit of doing. The next thing we got is what we call a V bridle. Again, it's nothing short of what it says it is. It's a V bridle. It's what attaches to the wire rope that's going to pull the truck up on the bed. Now it has all kinds of attachments, everything from little hooks up here that allows you to adjust a leg length to everything from this is called an R hook. That, by the way, is the safest way to hook up a car. It'll never come out until you make it come out. This is called a mini J hook just like it looks, a mini J. And last but not least is a T-hook. Um, I am not a fan of the T-hook. I've had them fall out on me while I was towing a car. I, I discourage the use of them. I really, um, they're on there as equipment that comes standard, but I can tell you that I don't particularly like it and I think they're terribly dangerous. Um, some guys use them and have good luck with them. That's just my preference. So, as far as hooking up a car basic, you're going to use over the wheel straps, you're going to use a V bridle to pull everything up on. So again, the order of importance, 
The next thing I have out here is something we call a J-chain. Um, this is what we carry on our trucks, and it's a simple chain. It's usually 8 to 10 feet long. It's a J. What I'm going to tell you we're going to use these on is anything like a pickup truck or a one-ton van, something with a solid axle in the back. Um, this is where I'm going to use this because when you get in those heavier applications, again there are two J chains on it, when you get into heavier applications and the and the tires that are on some of the pickup trucks and SUVs, I don't feel the over the wheel strap is sometimes particularly safe. I don't feel comfortable. So with the J chains, I'll use something called a cluster strap. And again, it has the same stuff on it, the same type of attachments as a V bridle does, an R hook, the, the T, and the little mini J again. I can also tell you, that this here we'll use to tie down and secure the vehicle. So we'll put J chains in the front and use these to secure the vehicle in the back of the rollback. This is also a handy recovery device because when you've got the, um, the wire rope can easily go into this hook right here. And if you got something in the wintertime that's easily to get out of a ditch or something, this makes a nice little recovery unit that can be used in another way. And I'll, as we go forward, I'll show you how that works. Again, there are two of these straps, one for each side, to make for a four-point tie-down. There's something here that me and people might not recognize, but this is a pool noodle. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. We like them to put on the wire rope if you've got a nice vehicle, a Beamer, a Mercedes, a a Ferrari or some really nice vehicle, you can slide this over the wire rope on those nicer vehicles and protect the wire rope from the underneath side of the car and maybe save yourself a damage claim. And again, you're not going to use it every day or in every car, but you can slide it on there and I'd say the guy that has that nice car is really going to appreciate you doing that. <clears throat> I like to keep WD-40, any type of lubricant, uh, PB blaster, anything at all. These ratchets will, from time to time, get to where they just get dried out in here in this little mechanism that works back and forth. You want to spray a little lube in there to keep them going. So keeping WD-40 around is always handy, your door hinges and jams. So the next thing, so now we're up to basic, so now we're down to a carrier operation, putting something on the bed and how we're going to secure it. Most everything that you've seen there, I'll secure a vehicle with that kind of equipment. The next thing that we got in line is wheel lift stuff. So on the back of this vehicle, you could put a second car on it. And we have, these are called wheel lift straps. And again, we'll show more later, but this attaches into the wheel lift and this goes over top of the tire and kind of secures over top of the tire. I can use it on the rollback here to kind of give you a little bit of a quick demo, but it, kind of goes over top of the tire, secures down at 10 and 2, and then you ratchet it down. So again, that's a wheel lift strap as we refer to it. If you're going to put something on the wheel lift, the next thing you've got to have is some lights to go on the vehicle you're towing, your tow lights. So we can put one on the bed, we can, we can now tie, tow one behind it, we've got the equipment for that. Typically, you're going to respond to people that are out of gas occasionally. It's not every day or maybe once a week, maybe maybe every day. You usually have a gas can. We like using these one and a half ton aluminum jacks. They work really nice. Uh, they're light. They're not overly heavy. For years, I used a, a heavier three and a half, three ton jack. Um, it's just what you're comfortable with. These are real light and easy. We use just a standard four-way. Again, you're not, uh, you need to be able to take a tire off a car that may have a broken ball joint, uh, that you need to get the tire out of your way. Um, could have any number of issues where the tire may need to come off. Or you may have somebody that you've rolled up on that's got a good spare, you were gonna tow them. Don't really need to tow them, now you just put the spare on and you're done and gone. Jump pack, uh, you can use jumper cables. I have become a fan of these and this is all I keep on the trucks. You can use jumper cables as well. But again, something to boost it off. So many cars that you're gonna roll up on uh, have got a dead battery or you need to boost a battery to get the, get the vehicle to come out of park and go into neutral so that you can tow it anyway. So keeping a good charged jump pack handy is, is just tools of the trade. 
So up through now, these couple items here will help you in um, basically towing a vehicle. Everything from taking a tire off to do a ball joint deal, getting some gas, or maybe jump starting it or getting it out of gear. The next stuff gets into a little more complex uh, parts of the recovery and towing or complex loading situation. This is called a snatch block. A snatch block is used on the wire rope to do one of two things. One, to change the direction of the wire rope, or two, is to have a multiplying effect so that the wire rope can do, and the winch can do more work than it than it can if it's just a straight single line going to it. This will essentially double the amount of power that you can put on it. So a snatch block is something that we will use uh, quite a bit, not on an everyday basis, but uh, pretty often. The sister chain is just nothing simpler than just a short chain that you can use to shorten things up with. And we use this on a, some recovery techniques as well as uh, just needing to shorten a chain up or you got a hook that breaks on something, this will get you out of a bind. And usually it can be five or six links long and a couple of hooks on it helps you a lot. Now this is, this is one of my own creations for carriers. What this is, I made these up out of, this is a hook off an old wire rope and just a short chain to come back on itself to hook your snatch block into. Yep, come back on there. And why this is important, we're gonna go back to the back of the tailboard here, is because you usually have these blocks in the back, these little T-hook slots, and that wire rope deal will go down in there. It slides right in there. Because often you got a car that needs to come a different direction or come out of a ditch, you need to get it like something like this in order to change the direction of the wire rope and come through a snatch block. Well, you don't have any way of getting into these T slots. And as an example, as you can see, that won't go down in there. And there's nothing on the back of the truck to hook to. So this little what I call a tailboard chain is something that I created you. I don't think you'll find it anywhere. Um, there are some other devices that I've seen used for this, um, but this is something that I've created, and this is stuff that I won't say is junk, but it was made out of little pieces that we get left over after straps and stuff. Again, <clears throat> broom and shovel. You always need a flat nose shovel because if you get it to an accident scene and there's debris, you need to be able to pick it up as well as sweep it off the road. Um, you don't want to have any claims coming back at you because you didn't clean a roadside up. So you definitely want to have a good working broom and a good working shovel. Next thing we're going to talk about here is skates. Skates is a way, sometimes you'll run into cars that have, that the keys are locked up in them. You don't have any keys. Um, the vehicle won't come out of park. There's all kinds of number of reasons why the tires will not road, roll. A differential is locked up, and the only way to move it is to actually what we call skate it. So what you're going to do is slide the tire. Well, rubber is designed to grip the road, so what this does is breaks the friction between the tire and the surface, usually black top or concrete, so it'll slide easier. So skates really come in handy for a lot of those jobs. Um, I'm going to skip over. This here is a jug. We like using plastic jugs. We'll fill these full of uh, floor dry. The floor dry is handy if you put in these jugs as opposed to a bag. You use buckets. Again, we like this here because it's nice and it's neat. Fill it full of floor dry. And if you have a wreck, uh, an accident where you need some floor dry, which is stuff you put down to dry the oil up with. You've got in a container, it can set in your toolbox and not become wet and useless. I always like 4x4s on my trucks, 4x4s, 6x6s, any type of wood. They can be 2x4s. Um, again, wood on a tow truck is just imperative. We use the Dickens out of it for all types of different situations. You've got a flat tire that you need to get a jack underneath of it any type of an issue, you can use wood as a cribbing material. So having some extra wood on a truck is really nice. The next thing we've got <coughs> is ramps. 
Now we have made these ramps ourselves. Um, there are companies out there that make some really nice ramps, a lot better than uh, probably what these are. But these we made out of six by sixes. Uh, we made them about 45 inches long so that they go in a 40 in, 48 inch toolbox. Again, we just tear tap them up and on the back end you'll see a little thing. You can raise your bed off the ground and put your bed on this lip and it decreases the angle so that some of your lowered cars or a car that's got a real lowered spoiler on it doesn't hit. Um, again, you, you can buy these that are probably nicer than my old wooden ones here, but uh, uh, these have worked well for us and, and if they break, but these things, you can see how old they are. They're old and worn off. They, they, they hold up really well and they're, they're not terribly heavy to move around um, and they hold, they're pretty durable. Uh, two more pieces of equipment, uh, a couple more pieces of equipment to show you. This device here is for a ball joint. Uh, cars often will have the ball joint drop out of them and it, it's not going to go anywhere until you get the ball joint up. So you take the tire off, that's the purpose of some of the tire stuff earlier. You jack it up, you set your broken control arm down in here and now this will slide. This is very slick bottom, it's made out of a material um, that, that's pretty easy to slide and it'll slide on most stuff. I've seen guys, we've actually driven cars out of parking garages, if you can believe that, on a ball joint block, multiple levels. Took our time, kind of slowed it down, but literally drove an S a Chevy uh, full-size pickup truck with a broken ball joint out of a parking garage and uh, down in the city. So ball joint block, you can see from the nicks and stuff that, that we use it uh, quite extensively. The last piece and is something that we call a rollover stick. A rollover stick is used to upright a car that's on its roof. Um, that'll be kind of my capstone course of uprighting that and teaching you how to do what's called a one lane upright. Now lastly that we've got on the ground over here, I do not keep these on every tow truck. I think you need at least one set um, around the shop. Um, these here you can put a tire into, that they spread out wider. You put a tire into it, you jack them down, and as they jack down they get closer and closer together, thereby picking the tire up on the ground. And you can see these things, that they're pretty mobile. They, they roll pretty easy. So if you get a car that's uh, in a parking garage, that's the ones that tends to give us a lot of fits as parking garages, or it's in a particular spot that you just, there's no way to get it out of there, out, maybe it's behind a house, uh, you know, the, 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 the driveways that go around back the house and it's inside the garage and you've lost the keys and you got to get it out of the garage, there's no way to get a truck behind there, you've got to get it out of that garage and GoJacks are, are just a handy tool um, to get a car out of a really bad situation. So I hope that I've went over all of this equipment in, in good enough detail to get you a, a little bit of a familiar with all of it. That's my goal here is so that if we go talking about later, you're not just, oh my goodness, what is he showing me for the first time? Um, but that kind of concludes this third lecture. We got one more lecture, to, another, next lecture will be coming up directly. Thank you.